Hello, welcome, and thanks for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Guman Singh, topping our newscast tonight. The University of the Virgin Islands Research and Technology Park on St. Croix is at the center of an ongoing dispute. At stake is millions of dollars in tax benefits given to tenants of the Research and Technology Park. What is the RT Park controversy all about? News 2's April Knight has that story. The roiling controversy surrounding the research and technology park continues. At the Senate hearing Friday, senators and testifiers were at it on what the law says about the matter. Tenants of the RT park get tax benefits, but at issue is this, which companies are actually qualified as tenants. A major bone of contention is whether the law allows virtual tenants. Some senators say the law does not clearly specify that physical renting is a requirement. On the other hand, the attorney general is clear that the opposite is true. There is an objective of the RT Park legislation, and I don't believe that that objective can be met once by, again by having virtual and, tenants. And I believe when the RT Park comes here to testify, they will be saying quite the opposite. In any case, the government now finds itself in a dilemma. Whatever the law says about virtual tenants, Government House and the Economic Development Authority had signed off on an agreement allowing tenants that could fall in that category. It is not consistent with the law. But you sign it. Yes, I, I know. I told, I, uh, I told you I, I, I signed it. The other major issue is whether Internet service providers or ISPs and cable television companies fall under the two categories of qualified businesses, knowledge-based and e-commerce. The Attorney General says no, because ISPs, he said, do not actually develop research and intellectual content. You're opening up the definition so that a whole lot of other companies that were never intended to be included in this legislation would then have the opportunity to apply and get benefits. Three major ISP companies currently getting tax breaks as tenants are Innovative, Choice and Broadband VI. Not only do they disagree with the Attorney General, they also say their agreement with the government was legally binding and made in good faith. They also point to the millions they've donated in charities and investments in anticipation of the tax breaks. Innovative has not only stayed a loyal partner to the community and the government, but actually stepped up and made significant investments to assist the territory in the last three years. Revocation of Innovative's RT Park incentives will have a negative effect on any future investments by CFC, not only in Innovative, but in the territory as a whole. Some senators also say the governor seemed to have made up his mind about disqualifying the currently qualified ISPs, a move that would give the government's VINGN a clear advantage. Why did the governor have a plan to strip the ISPs from benefits as knowledge-based entities under the tech park in September 2013 if he only asked for your opinion in December of 2013. What seems to be a simple matter, whether a company is qualified as an RT Park tenant or not, is turning into a question of whether tax breaks are being granted improperly to certain big companies, or perhaps the administration seeks to give VINGN an advantage. The matter goes before Senate again on Wednesday for another round of debate. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. News 2 will keep you updated on the Research and Technology Park legislation. Well, members of the Shalomali High School class of 1954 were honored on their 60th anniversary with a plaque ceremony Monday in the Earl B. Otley Legislative Chambers on St. Thomas. The class of 1954 was the last group of students to occupy and graduate from the legislature's Capitol building. Realize that you are a generation with an unfortunate knowledge of the depression and war. Yet, you preserved, you laughed, you cried, and you committed yourselves to making your home and the world a better place. I do want to commend all of you for, for really being these trailblazers, and I think you set such a fine example for the students who are here, the importance of an education, the importance of Charlotte Amalia High School, and how we need to continue to work to preserve it. In other news, former VI police captain Enrique Saldana, who is accused of brutally mur murdering his wife, pleaded not guilty on Thursday during his arraignment. No new information was presented at that hearing, and Attorney General Vincent Fraser said he could not release information about the case, including the victim's cause of death. 
Saldana is currently facing charges of second-degree murder, voluntary manslaughter, first-degree assault, and third-degree assault. His trial is set for May. He is not scheduled to appear again in court until November. Members of the Downtown Revitalization Inc., a U.S. Virgin Islands nonprofit corporation, they're looking forward to the Barker Bill that's expected to be on the agenda. The Barker Bill, which is Bill Number 30-0002, and its amendment in the nature of a substitute will be heard in Legislative Committee hearing on Thursday, June 19th at 3 p.m. Presenters will include Wayne Biggs, Commissioner of Licensing and Consumer Affairs, Beverly Nicholson Doty, Commissioner of Tourism, David Bourne, President of the Downtown Revitalization Inc., Joe Albain, President of the St. Thomas St. John Chamber of Commerce, Mark Eckerd, President of the St. Croix Chamber, and Charles Matthews, owner of the Shaka Zulu store. Well, stakeholders and all AFT members on St. Thomas are calling for action to repeal Act Number 7369, as you know, protests have been going on. And on Wednesday, June 18th at 3 p.m., they are encouraging everyone to meet at the Earl B. Otley Legislative Hall. They're asking senators to vote yes to repeal the act. Why? To relieve educators and other personnel from this enigma and yet another costly, unfunded legislation. That's what it stands for. Meanwhile, the St. Croix Federation of Teachers also held their second protest over the changes to the school calendar on Friday at the legislature. About 15 AFT supporters and members made their way to the legislature wearing T-shirts that read, Reclaiming the Promise, Reclaim It. AFT members outside held signs that read, Repeal Act 7369 Now, Enough is Enough, while another group sat inside during the Senate hearing. In column two to keep you updated. What are the prices looking like at the pumps? The wholesale price for premium went up one cent, and the price of regular and diesel remained the same. After Hovenza adjusted their rack rates, independent gas station operators in the territory are now paying $3.47 per gallon for regular, $3.69 per gallon for premium, and $3.45 per gallon for diesel fuel when they buy their fuel wholesale at Hovenza. Now, those prices include the 14 cents per gallon tax the refinery collects for the government. Turn our attention overseas. The crisis in Iraq pitting two branches of Islam against one another is deepening. Sunni fighters are continuing their advance into towns and cities, while the Shiite-led government continues to struggle with the response. Craig Boswell has the latest. Sunni fighters are using weapons they captured from the Iraqi army against Iraqi troops. Overnight, the group known as the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria took control of another city, Tal Afar, and is vowing to continue the attacks all the way to Baghdad. The militants also released graphic photos claiming to have massacred more than 1,700 captured Iraqi soldiers, though CBS News cannot verify the authenticity of the images. In an effort to help the Iraqi government regain control of the country, the Obama administration says it is open to discussions with Iran. Iran has close ties with Iraq's Shiite-led government. We would encourage Iran to push the Iraqis to act to address problems uh, in a non-sectarian way. President Obama is considering different U.S. military options, including deploying about 100 special forces soldiers to train their Iraqi counterparts. Whatever choice the president makes, most everyone agrees the U.S. needs to help stabilize the situation on the ground. There's a broader risk to stability in the region. I think the risk to the United States homeland is real. More U.S. ships are arriving in the region, including the USS Mesa Verde, carrying 500 Marines. It's joining the USS George H.W. Bush, an aircraft carrier already in the Persian Gulf. Craig Boswell, CBS News, the White House. Meanwhile, keeping our eye on the economy, the crisis in Iraq is driving up the price of oil. Crude rose another seven cents on Monday and is up four percent this month. On Wall Street, investors are waiting to see how the Obama administration reacts to the unrest in Iraq. Here's the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. The Dow, Nasdaq, S&P all up. The Dow 5, Nasdaq 10, S&P 1. It was a big graduation weekend. 310 high school seniors graduated on Sunday from Charlotte Mali High School. The valedictorian Sheila Joseph will attend Brown University with a quarter million dollars in scholarship support. The salutatorium Shariah Jacobs is headed to the University of the Virgin Islands 
to study civil engineering. Of the 310 seniors, 228 are headed to college, while 38 are going to join the military. Don't dare you to go beyond just living and live big. Part of living big means staying true to yourself. As we go out into college, we are going to be faced with strange people, strange places, and strange choices. When someone tries to challenge your morals and your ideals, will you remember who you are? But I would like to tell you that the road to your success will not be easy. There is no golden spoon or pot of gold waiting for you at the end of the rainbow. You have to be focused, believe in yourself, and determined to succeed. Congratulations. Meanwhile, 186 graduates flipped their tassels during the Ivana Eudora Ken High School's 41st commencement ceremony on Saturday night at the school's auditorium. Most students were feeling like a million bucks. The total amount of scholarships won by individuals in the senior class is over five million. This class was something else. But in the end, as a group, we managed to make it a beautiful and memorable year. Take this lesson with you and remember, a house divided against, against itself cannot stand. School is not just about socializing with friends. Teachers affect our experiences and perception of school. We have some teachers that we will want to remember for a long time to come. And we have some teachers that we can't wait to forget. As a class, we have heard it time and time again that we are about to enter the real world, a world where no one is there to babysit us or scold us for doing something wrong, a world where we are free to make our own decisions for ourselves. But as I look at you, I know I have nothing to worry about. In my eyes, I'm already seeing the future doctors, lawyers, technicians, star athletes, etc. And I have no doubt in my mind that you will all do great things. Well, 12 outstanding students are now ready at the St. Croix Career and Technical Education Center rather issued certificates of completion to 259 students Sunday during the center's 19th annual certification ceremony held at Educational Complex. The students, 92 of whom were enrolled in the center's adult evening classes, finished coursework in a variety of career technical problems programs. One of the evening's highlights was the keynote address from Chef Digby Stradiron, a career and technical education center graduate who was recently named VI Culinary Ambassador by the VI Tourism Department and Chef of the Year by the Caribbean Tourism Organization. According to Principal Willard John, obtaining technical certification will give students an edge above non-certified counterparts. Assistant Principal Joseph Schrader agreed, saying that today's employers are in search of skilled and schooled candidates to fill open positions. Now here we go, 12 outstanding students are now ready to take on the world. The St. Thomas St. John Seventh-day Adventist commencement, it was held in the BCB Gymnasium on Sunday morning. Valedictorian Karishma Marsh is already an inspiration among her peers as an early admission student at UVI, studying psychology and accounting, a double major. She juggled both high school with college life and worked. The salutatorian is Kamira Webster, who also shared some words of wisdom along with her fondest memories at the school. She plans to enter the nursing program at UVI. All 12 students plan to attend college. Taije Maduro is the new 2014 St. John Festival Princess. The eight-year-old student who attends the Ulla Muller School on St. Thomas uh, also won Miss Congeniality, Best Sportswear, Best Storybook Cartoon Character, and Little Miss Intellect. Kaylee Redding, 10 years of age, she attends the Guy Benjamin Elementary School on St. John. She won Best Evening Wear and Miss Photogenic. And then Marlene Jamalia Warner, a nine-year-old student who attends the Bethel Baptist Day School on St. Croix. All the girls were winners. On Friday, the Senior Variety Show was held at the Winston Wells Ball Field in Cruise Bay. So many head out, headed out to enjoy that. And then on Saturday, it was the Festival Bike Race at the National Park Office in Cruise Bay. Now, here's another huge event coming up. Six young ladies will be vying for Miss St. John 2014 on Saturday, June 21st, back at the Winston Wells Ballpark. Take a look at the beautiful contestants. Music will be by Poison Band. It all begins at 8 p.m. and presented by the St. John Festival and Cultural Organization. 
The synesthesia experience was felt and even witnessed by those who were on hand for the gallery launch party on Friday evening at Yacht Haven Grand. The event, better described as the Merging of Senses exhibition, brought out many art lovers and those who just wanted to experience something different on a Friday night. It included not just art, but performances by Enzar Cologne and Alana Davis. The featured artists include Shansi Miller, Amy Gibbs, Catherine Hintz, Lynn, Lynn Berry, Madeline Meehan, and Eric Brown. Now the gallery hours still open from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. until July 3rd. Be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next. <music>